From the second half of the 19th onwards, Brazilian museums began to count on the special support of cultural incentive laws, which came into force on a federal, state and municipal basis. It was a time when large international exhibitions began to come to Brazil, especially those from France, a country very efficient in the exchange of works of art. For a young country like Brazil, with only 500 years of history, many Brazilian museums entered the era called spectacularization of art. In fact, a term coined by art critics and somewhat derogatory because they claimed that museums lost their legitimate characteristics in favor of absorbing other cultures. An absurd claim, to say the least, and riddled with ideological interests. That has not changed since then. The fact is that the main Brazilian museums then moved to another level of importance based on the possibility of exchanging their collections and exhibitions as part of international agendas. This important phase of our musical history allowed the introduction of other activities in museums, especially classical music performed by local symphonic and philharmonic orchestras. Over time, popular music also came to be accepted in the precincts previously called canonical, and this happened because museums are for everyone and because people have different tastes. It was necessary to understand this need in the name of the interests of the community. The introduction of these new activities has also inputted the term living museum, as if to point out those museums were previously dead in the sense of not having great incentives besides having their collections visited. As director of Marx, Museum of Art of Rio Grande do Sul, the largest and main museum in my state in Porto Alegre, for three different periods, I always understood the importance of music in the museum grounds, so we have implemented this vital activity on a scheduled basis. This action has always had the support of the Association of Friends, a necessary organ for the life of the museum in any country worldwide, as it's the financial and organizational arm of the museum's relationship with the community, visitors, government, and sponsors. Some events apart, such as a night of museums, organized by an external company with its sponsorship, music and musical concerts, especially those of a popular nature, were also introduced on a night in May each year whenever possible on the 18th in a traditional way to commemorate International Museum Day. The relevance of this event is that it takes place simultaneously in several museums in Porto Alegre, always at night, parallel to the so-called French Nuit Blanche. The music there fulfills the relevant accessory role of drawing attention to the existence of museums. In 2019, I was president of Ibram, Instituto Brasileiro de Museus, a regulatory body and organizer of the policies of the Brazilian museum sector, when then I could notice a certain unity on the interest in the presentation of music in Brazilian museum spaces. In addition to the undeniable argument that music, sublime art, supports the activities of living museums, it's important to highlight the direct effects of this art on museums in terms of enriching the culture and the creative economy with the creation of jobs among musicians, producers, assemblers, etc. With the support of museums, the formation of new talents, sometimes sought after on the outskirts of the cities, has also taken place. Porto Alegre is an example of this, with its Youth Orchestra of Rio Grande do Sul, conducted by Maestro Telmo Jaconi for over 10 years, and in which young people of poor origin participate and resort to the project in their first artistic training. This is not to say little for a young country like Brazil, in comparison to the Czech Republic, 
which was found a few decades ago, but carries a millionary history of culture, and where the presentation of music in churches and public spaces is a regular activity inseparable even of their day-to-day -day life.